Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. This bench really needs a clear up. Okay, well that's somewhat better. But what do you see here? Could this be? Am I going back to the Tesla coils? Oh yes. <laughs> But before we start, I've just got some bad news about the Star Kids Episode 8. You might remember that time when I was switching to Linux and then switching back to Windows. I forgot to back up a lot of files, so I thought some files I'd already backed up onto one hard drive, and some files I'd also backed up onto another hard drive. Well, it turns out that I hadn't backed up those files at all. So, yeah, Episode 8 is not happening. And to be honest, I'm thinking that's a blessing in disguise, because I hated working on episode 8. I absolutely loathed it. I didn't like the direction the show was going. So, yeah. And it's not just that that's gone. There's a lot of programs that I used to use. I those all backed up. They're gone. There's a lot of videos in progress. They're gone. So, I'm going to have to do a lot of this all over again. But anyway, with that said, on with the video. So, as you can see, I've got three secondaries here. All made by me, of course. So this one is about <clears throat> 600 turns, something like that. This one is 500 turns, but on a thinner core form. This one's about 7 centimeters across, and this one's 5 centimeters across, if I remember. And this one has been wound with at least a thousand turns of really, really fine wire. So, as for the primary, I had a bit of a flash of inspiration, and I decided I'd make a tunable primary. So I got a tube that I'd made out of cardboard and I made two strings of zip ties and I wound them around the tube in an interlaced way so zip tie one, zip tie two, zip tie one, zip tie two and so on all the way down the tube and then I removed one of the strings of zip ties and that way I've got a nice groove that I can put the wire in and it's nice and evenly spaced. Well for the most part anyway. And for the wire, I got some thick wire which I stripped all the insulation off, then I made two lengths of that wire and twisted them together so I got the wire to use as the primary. Ideally, I wanted to use some thin copper pipe but the local hardware store didn't have any so this is what I had to go with. And how this is tunable is that the bottom of the coil would be connected as it normally would be, but instead of connecting the other end of the coil to the circuits, Instead, a crocodile clip's going to be connected, and I can go all the way around and find the exact number of turns I need. So, it doesn't matter if it needs four turns, or five turns, or four and a half turns, or three and three quarter turns. When I get the best output, I know that the primary will be in resonance with the secondary. So, this is the circuit that I've come up with. Now, this is based on something I saw in a dream, although if I actually built that circuit, there's no way it would actually work. So, I made some modifications to it, and as you can see here, there's all the typical things that you'd see in a tester core circuit. Got the output coil, you know, secondary, with the primary wrapped around it. Capacitor, which I haven't chosen the value of yet, because firstly, I need to find out what the resonant frequency of my secondary is, and uh, pick an appropriate capacitor so I can tune the primary. Also, this capacitor ensures that the primary is only going to see AC. So, yeah, we've got the output stage, gate drive transformer, gate driver chips. And for the feedback, I'm going to take the bottom of the secondary, feed it into this Smith trigger here with these two diodes protecting it from over voltage. Yeah, so that's going to clear up what's coming back from the um, secondary. It's going to make it nice and square. If there's any phasing issues, I can cascade a bunch of these Smith triggers together and it should fix that. And if that doesn't work, <coughs> excuse me a minute, instead I'll have the secondary connected to ground, so there's no wire connecting it to the Smith trigger, and instead I'll have an antenna connected to the Smith trigger and get the feedback going that way. Another idea I'm going to try is this single MOSFET design. Now normally you'd have your positive going into the primary and then going into the MOSFET and then going to the zero volts. Well, I've decided to try it with the MOSFET first and then the primary because I want to see what kind of waveforms I get across the MOSFET and uh, other things. And yeah, it's a very similar setup to the circuit that I showed you earlier. 
We've got the feedback coming from the secondary going into the... Um, well, I haven't drawn the submit trigger because I want to try that with and without it, but... So we got the output going into the gate driver chip and then the gate drive transformer and the MOSFET. We'll see how well that works. And here's another thing I want to try out. It's very similar to the last circuit I showed you, but this time without a gate drive transformer. And yeah, I've added the SMIT trigger as well. Now with this circuit, it's very important to not connect this zero volt rail to the ground, because if I do that, I'm going to short out the primary coil and uh, yeah, if I tried it like that, something would definitely blow up. Most likely the MOSFETs. First thing I want to do though, is I want to find out the resonant frequency of my secondaries. And that's without a top load, with one top load, with two top loads. There are top loads of these things, by the way, in case you were wondering. So this very simple circuit here is called a Slayer Exciter. And I don't have to worry about tuning it or anything. And as you can see, it works in a very similar way to the other circuits I just showed you. So we get feedback from the bottom of the secondary going into this transistor's base. Got an LED here to protect it from over voltage in one direction and the built-in diode in the transistor is going to protect it in the other direction. Of course I forgot to mention where the power's connected, so yeah, I'm going to say 12 volts there. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to get on with right now. Tell you something, I'm sick of all this sunny weather, but then you know me, you know I hate sunny weather anyway. It's all we've had just lately, sun, 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 sun and nothing else. If I look at the weather report, yep, same thing all day, every day. Okay, so here's the circuit, this little tiny contraption right here. I've also added a couple of capacitors across the supply rails just to make sure it's getting nice smooth power. And also, in line with the power supply, I have a 12 volt bulb, just to limit the current in case something goes wrong. And over here, you can see I've already connected it up to my uh, primary. So we're ready to start. Alright, so I've got one of my secondaries in there, and I'm scoping across the transistor. So, the scope's ground is connected to the emitter, and the uh, scope's signal wire is connected to the collector. Because I'm really curious about what kind of waveform and what kind of voltage we're going to get across the transistor. So, let's turn this on, and let's see. Oh yeah, we're getting... Quite a bit of voltage across the transistor there. We're getting like almost 40 volts there. So this is across the collector and emitter. Yeah, we can see we've got almost 40 volts there. And this is the waveform at the base. All right then, so to test that this thing is actually producing RF, I've now got this piece of yellow wire hooked up to the scope's uh, yeah, signal terminal, whatever you want to call it. So this thing is producing RF, we'll see it on the scope. And there's some thoughtless, careless, inconsiderate dickhead out there who thinks it's fun to make a lot of noise and annoy a nice day for everybody else. I don't know if that's a motorbike or a chainsaw or quite what that is, but one thing I do know is that it's pissing me off. It's only doing that for fun. I don't know who it is, but I can assure you it's just doing it for the hell of it. Because he wants to be an asshole. Also, the birds have become really noisy just lately. I don't know why. Now let's turn this on and see what we get. All right. Okay. It would also help if I was pointing the camera at the um, point of interest right now. But yeah, this thing is producing RF. Now I'm just going to bring my hand close to it. See if that changes anything. Yeah, it sure does. Now, I wonder if we can light a fluorescent light with this. Of course, uh, you probably won't even be able to see it because it won't stop being sunny. And people wonder why I hate sunny days. Well, now you know. Oh, yeah, we are getting RF. I don't know if the camera's picking this up at all, but I can see it is glowing. I might have to wait till the evening to do this experiment because, uh, well, um, it is working, but you're not seeing it on the camera. Because of the stupid sun! So this is with no top load. And we have about 767 kilohertz. Alright, I'm going to write that down. 767 kilohertz. Now I'm going to stick one top load on it. <clears throat> oh, that's really... I have to turn it down a bit. Now it's pulling a lot of power. I'm going to reduce the 
supply voltage. So, 651 kilohertz with one top load. So, with two top loads, we have much more output and 615 kilohertz. So, yeah, we've gone from 767 to 615 kilohertz. Actually, let's see if that will actually light a fluorescent light while I'm at it. Maybe I just increase the voltage a little bit. Seeing how far I can go with the supply voltage. Alright, we're on the full 12 volts now. It's a little bit unstable like that, though. And now the 500 turn teenager coil. I call it a teenager coil because it's skinny. I think this will easily be 1 megahertz. Yeah, 1.3 megahertz. 1. Point, oh, about 1.4 megahertz, actually. Okay, 1.46. I'm going to say 1.46. Because that's what my scope's reading. Now let's add a top load. So with one top load we get much more output at about 1.08 megahertz. So 1.08. Stick the other top load on. Let's see what we get. About 1.01. .01. I wonder if that can light a tube. Yes, it can. Okay, so here's the short fat coil with about a thousand turns of thin wire. Let's see what this one gives us. Okay, this one is at about 397 kilohertz. Can we light a bulb with this? Yeah, we can. Of course, the camera's probably not even seeing that. Let's try it with one top load. Make sure that's nice and well connected. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, let's release, um, reduce the supply voltage a bit, and on the scope too. Alright, so that's gone down to about 318 megahertz. Did I say megahertz? I meant kilohertz. And finally, with two top loads. Uh, it's a little bit unstable, but I'd say that's about 301 kilohertz. So, according to my research, if you want to call it that. Oh, would you believe it? I thought the noise was all finished. And it started again. But like I was saying, according to my research, adding a top load dramatically reduces the resonant frequency, as you'd expect it to, and it also increases the output. However, adding a second top load, as you can see here and here, doesn't really make that much difference. So, I'm gonna go with just one top load on each coil. So as for the coils I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one, and this one, but I'm not going to use this one because this one originally was just gonna be used as a choke in one of my other electrical experiments. So yeah, these two coils it is. Okay, so I'm just doing a few more experiments now that the evening has come. Well, coming. So. I've discovered that if I disconnect this from the ground, it's a lot more stable. See if we can make a fluorescent tube light up. And indeed we can. If I bring my hand near it, it doesn't really change the frequency that much. But um, yeah, it's pulling more power. Probably because all that energy is going into my hand. Alright, so I've now connected the crocodile clip about halfway. So we're only using half as many turns. Now let's see what that gives us. Oh yeah, we got a lot more output and it's pulling enough power to make the bulb come on. Can we get this to light up? Yes, we can. I'm going to give that poor transistor a rest now because, yeah, using an audio frequency transistor for RF frequencies, you know. So yeah, we now know what the resonant frequencies of our secondaries are. And um, yeah, now we've got something to go on. I think this will be the last video I edit in Premiere because, well, in that great software loss thing, I lost the original software that I used to transcode this into something that Premiere can read. I used to transcode the clips into, uh, what was it now, DivX and Adobe Premiere could read those. Well, this is what I'm using to transcode the clips now. In fact, this is a new version of what I've always been using, but because this new version doesn't have the codec that I need, I've had to transcode them to something much worse. Kden Live's looking pretty good. 
And since there's a Windows version of this, I won't have to use Linux. And I think it's just as good as the Linux version anyway. Is that or shortcut? Anyway, I've got to go and get this video edited, so yeah. Next time we'll be uh, testing out some of the circuits that you saw. And until next time, goodbye. Even at night they do this. Never got a moment's peace in this place.